Hi friends, it's David here and today I want to talk to you about the Hamilton Cocky Field Mechanical which in my opinion is the best value watch you can get in all watchmaking. The watch with the best value for your money. Now when it comes to collecting watches my philosophy is that after every expensive piece I buy a cheap one under $500. Last year after I bought my Hulk I set myself on a quest to find the best value watch in watchmaking. And that's the model I came up with. Hamilton Cocky Field Mechanical, which I bought for $425. When I'm looking for a watch to buy, I mainly look at three, three topics, three points. And that's the brand, the quality of the watch and the design. Now, when it comes to the brand, I want some heritage. I want history. I want to feel the dedication of the brand to watchmaking. My money goes to the company that has proven to dedicate its soul to the craft of watchmaking. And with Hamilton, I think that box is absolutely checked. They were founded over 100 years ago in 1875 in Pennsylvania, USA. And since the beginning, Hamilton had a strong focus on accuracy. They basically started their business by supplying watches to the US railroad companies. Now back in the day, the railroad operators did not have an electronic guidance system. They weren't even able to directly communicate with each other over long distances. So they had to rely on timekeeping to coordinate their schedule. So the only way to prevent collisions on crossroads was by knowing exactly at what time the other trains would pass and at what time your own train would pass the section. As you can see, accuracy of the watches is key here. So Hamilton, by providing high quality watches, has helped preventing accidents on the railroad and probably saved the lives of countless of people. Now, later on, this relationship between Hamilton and the US government, which was operating the railroads, um, it developed even further. In the 1920s, the government started developing the US airmail system and Hamilton provided watches for that purpose as well. And later on, during the Second World War, Hamilton, for a period of time, actually ceased all its commercial activities to produce watches exclusively for the US armed forces to be used in the war against fascism. I mean, this is such an interesting history. So when you're at the dinner party wearing a Hamilton and that snob comes along and asks you why you're not wearing a Rolex instead, you get about 20 minutes of history material to educate the man. So super interesting history when it comes to Hamilton. Now, the second point that I'm looking for that I've mentioned is the design. And often when it comes to uh, cheaper priced watches, they have kind of a knockoff design. Just to name one example, Maurice Lacroix. If you look at that watch, uh, you think about the Royal Oak right away. It looks like a cheap clone of the Royal Oak. When I look at the design of a brand, I want to see that they have their own design identity, that they're not just copying. And if we scroll through the, the models that Hamilton is offering, I think you can see a very clear uh, design language that they have, especially when you look at uh, at the mechanical models, the, the hand-wound models, you can immediately see that those are Hamilton's. They have their own design language. Hamilton even themselves are responsible for one of the more iconic designs in the history of watchmaking, which was this beauty that Elvis actually was um, famous for wearing. I think it's safe to say that Hamilton is going their own way in terms of design, which is very important to me when I'm when I'm looking uh, to buy a watch. But now let's look at the design of this specific model for a second. It has a 38 millimeter diameter, which in my opinion is the perfect size for a wristwatch. It's a very slim watch with nine millimeters in thickness. Now full disclosure here, the watch comes with this beige strap, which I think is just a horrible fit for this watch, which is why immediately I swapped it out. Usually I'm wearing it on a variety of NATO straps or on a black leather that I really like. Now I think it's a very understated yet elegant looking watch. You got some nice details, for example, the Hamilton logo on the crown. And on the backside, you got some brushed and some sandblasted portions. 
The whole case on the top side, the whole case that you can see while wearing it is uh, sandblasted. You could argue that the locks are a little bit long. Me personally, I don't have an issue with that. The only thing I don't like design-wise, well, actually there are two things. The first thing I don't like is the curved crystal. Now I gotta say the glare that you see here on the crystal looks much worse on camera than in real life. So in actual day-to-day -day usage, you will not notice much of glare. What you will notice though, is the color of the dial. Now, the color of the dial is a deep, rich, beautiful black. However, in most angles, the curved crystal is bending the light in a way that kind of fades out the black and it looks more like a dark gray. I think that's a shame. The combination of black dial and white numerals would look fantastic if it wouldn't be for the curved crystal that kind of fades out the richness of the black. But obviously I can live with it. Since I got this watch, it is the one in my collection that gets the most wrist time of all of them by far. Second and last thing in terms of the design that I don't enjoy very much are the hands. Now, in my opinion, they just look a bit cheap. They're stainless steel, they have loom in them, which I really appreciate, but they seem to be painted or, or some way coated with the white color. And I think that gives them this plasticky look that I don't really enjoy, but I guess that's just personal opinion. Now, third point I'm looking for, as I said, is the quality. And the cocky field does not disappoint in that regard. Hamilton started as a US company, but in the later stages of its history, uh, was sold to the Swatch Group. So they are now located in Switzerland. They are now considered Swiss made watches, which is a nice assurance of quality, I think. And yeah, just, just looking at the watch, you, you, can, you can see and appreciate the quality. We're gonna talk about, about the movement later, which is very high quality in my opinion as well. But just looking at it, for example, the uh, print on the dial. I mean, I've seen Rolex Submariners that had more blemishes on the dial than my cocky field here from Hamilton. And it's a $400 watch. But even if they would charge $4,000 for this watch, well, for $4,000, I wouldn't buy it. But if I would, I wouldn't be able to complain about the quality, even for that price. Now, the movement, uh, they're not using an in-house movement. The Hamilton is, is mainly using ETA movements. But I gotta say, this movement is just a, such a pleasure to operate. I mean, just the sound of winding it, you know, pulling the crown, turning the hands. It's just very, very satisfying to operate, if that makes sense. Now, accuracy-wise, I'm not sure if this goes across the board for all of them, but mine, I've measured at plus four seconds per day, which I think is fantastic for a $400 watch. You've got some luxury brands that advertise their in-house movements to do plus five seconds. And here we got plus four seconds. Fantastic performance, in my opinion. Now, one last thing I need to address is Seiko. Why did I choose a Hamilton and not a Seiko? If you look at the SKX, which is a fantastic watch, you can get it for half the price or less of the Hamilton. But I think the Hamilton has superior quality, which justifies double the price of an SKX. If you buy an SKX, you're probably gonna look at an inaccuracy of somewhere between 10 and 20 seconds per day. Remember here, I got plus four per day. I think that's worth the extra $200. Plus you hear about some other quality issues with the SKX, for example, print on the dial that isn't straight and things like that. I'm not aware uh, of any of these complaints regarding the Hamilton cocky field. So that's it. This is my reasoning for why I think the Hamilton cocky field mechanical is the best value in all of watchmaking. If you know a model that is cheaper at better quality, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. I'm posting at least once a week, so make sure to not miss it and have a good day.